Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Lift him, lift him, lift his name. Lift his name, lift it. Hallelujah. Hey, glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. God, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you all the glory in this house. We give you the praise, the honor today. God, we thank you for being so good to us all. Thank you. It is by your hand and your grace because you're so merciful that we have made it this far that we are here today. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening each soul, strengthening each heart, giving peace to the soul and the mind of these, your people, blessing each household. We thank you, Lord, for protection that enabled us to travel over the dangerous highways and travel and make it here this morning at this, the appointed time, O oh God, the assembly of the saints, whereby we can sit at thy feet and hear thy word. That, Father, the words that you give to us, they are spirit and they are life. Bless us us now and cause life to come from your heart to ours in Jesus name look upon us and touch now anoint the ears of these us your people father bless us that we may hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the church and bless us oh God that our heart would be good ground for the seed of your word to be sown into and if we lean and depend upon thee God give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know the hope of your calling, the riches of the inheritance of the saints of which we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands and shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. We thank the Lord, amen, for blessing us to be here. We thank God for, amen, our trip to San Diego, California, and, and blessing us to arrive safely there, enjoy and meet family that we've never known or met before, and to return home safely. Amen. Amen. Yes. And for the travel and those of you who've been traveling, and, I, and also for the safe return of Elder Ross and the family. Praise the Lord. We thank God for them. Amen. We praise the Lord. Amen. If you would turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Philippians and find chapter 2 there. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God our Father. Lord, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you would just pray for me I'm trying to get used to these new glasses amen and trying to fix my eyes on <laughs> on these uh, on, on the verses and things so amen if you see me take them off that's because I hadn't quite got it adjusted yet but we thank God amen, amen. praise the Lord we're so happy amen to see each of you now when you have chapter 2 Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to read into your hearing. I'm going to be I'm going to begin reading at verse five and I'm going to read into your hearing down. Amen. Uh, verse 16. Amen. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and, and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Verse 16, verse 16 says, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that, I'm, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. You may take your seats. Just tell your neighbor, the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be unto his name. Hallelujah. The Bible says in this particular, in, in this passage of scripture, it says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Paul is talking to the church. Paul is talking to the body of Christ. And so Paul is telling the church, says, listen, church, let this mind which was in you be, which was in Christ, be also in you. In other words, your mind has to change. Your mind, you must allow the mind of Christ to abide in you and to govern you. This is important because it says, so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So when he says, let the mind of Christ be in you, then it's so that you can become as he is. Amen. So that you can become as he is. Remember Ephesians 4 and 15 says, uh, speaking the truth in love, that you may grow up into him. Not like him, not walking like him, not talking like him, but into him. That means that your heart, so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That means let your heart change. Let there be such a change in you, a growth in you, a level of maturity in you that you actually become him. The life that people, the life that you live becomes his life being lived out in you, through you. Are y'all still with pastor? All right. So he says here, let this mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I want to go over to uh, Galatians right quick. Amen. I want to go over to Galatians chapter 2. And it says, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth where? In me. Now watch this. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself what? for me. So he says, now the life that I live, I live uh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He's saying to us, listen, the life that you see me living, I'm living by the faith of the Son of God. The life you see me living is really not me because I was crucified in Christ. In other words, it's, it's my old, I gave up my opinion. It's not my will anymore, but it's his will being lived out, carried out in my life now. And so the things that you see me doing, it's really him. He gets all the credit. He gets all the glory. Everything that you see accomplished in my life at this time, I don't get the credit for it. I don't get the glory for it. I don't get the praise for it. He does. He gets all of the credit because it's his life now being lived out through me. He saved me, sanctified me. He changed me. He turned my life around. And so I became crucified in him. Watch this now. We are the what? Body of Christ. 
we are the body of Christ the church the body of Christ and so now we being the body of Christ thank you Jesus we now this life that we live this life you see us living it we are living it as the body of Christ now this is important because the body of Christ if we are the body of Christ then what we are doing we're doing it as him we're doing it as he is we're doing it as he is remember he was he was crucified he was put in the grave and God raised him up he is alive so now we abide in a living savior not only a risen but a living savior a living functioning talking speaking powerful savior and so now we abide in him and we are his movement we are his movement we are his conversation we are the expression of his love and his power we are the demonstration of Christ in the earth he says in order for us to adequately and sufficiently display and reflect him like we should let this mind which was in Christ be also in you we cannot we cannot do it with our mind it takes his mind y'all talk back to me it's going to take his mind in other words having his mind causes us to reflect him to live as though we reflect him to live as though it's him making the decisions it's him leading me it's him guiding me it's his will not my will it's his his opinion is his word not my opinion it's what he wants and not what I think y'all still with pastor he says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the way you do this is yes the Bible teaches us Paul was talking to Timothy he said you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind you must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, you've got to let the word of God settle in your heart and become the voice, become the power, become the light, become the life, L-I-F-E. Because these words he gives to us, they're spirit and they are life, L-I-F-E. And so therefore the word that he has spoken has to abide in you. And the word of God that abides in you is the life of God in you it's the life of God through you it's the life the power of God given expressed and demonstrated in you we serve a God that is a God of demonstration if it was necessary for us to just have words only he would have left instructions he wouldn't have had to give his life but because we were and he intended for us to live the life of Christ to allow Christ to live in us he had to give his life so that God could re, re, so that God could quicken him back to life and cause us to live in the life of Christ y'all still with pastor so he says now let me read some more he says who being the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God you got to understand who Christ was and who Christ is the Bible says that he was equal with God but thought it not robbery to be equal with God but what did he do he humbled himself he took upon himself the form of a servant so in heaven before he came he was equal with God he was equal with God but he rep but he was in his lane he represented his 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 position as the son of God so being the son of God he did not try to be something or someone he was not this is something that the body of Christ we've got to get it we've got to get it we've got to get it he says he says he thought it not robbery to be equal but but understood that listen he has to in order for the will of God to be done in order for the will of the father to be done he had to lay down his deity he laid it down and he took upon himself the form of a servant he came in the fashion of a man he was born of a virgin he laid down his 
his glory, his deity. And he came down through 42 generations. He came down. He was born of a virgin Mary. And he was born in the earth. He became a man. He did not make no reputation for himself. But what he did was take on himself the form of a servant. He didn't try to build his reputation. He came, he says, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And so he came to do the will of the father. He came to do the will of him that sent him. And so we understand that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. You got to understand, saints, Jesus Christ is a servant. Jesus Christ took upon himself the form of a servant. It's important that we recognize because in the world today, th th there is a lot of, there's a lot of pride and ego in the earth today there's a lot of attention seeking there's a there's a lot of recognition seeking in the earth today there's a lot of people today that want to be great that wants their name to be great but you've got to be careful every saint every person has to be very careful because we got to recognize that Jesus said let him who will be great among you be the best be the servant among you and so so, so titles don't entitle us. Titles, do, titles don't entitle us. All a title really means is, is that you have somehow been recognized as a higher level of servant. You, you, you somehow have allowed God to humble you and make you humble. It does not mean that you have accomplished anything. It means that you are a servant and you have humbled yourself to the degree that you will allow God to use you and to work through you and to accomplish through you. It's not because I'm great or you are great or anybody's great. The only great person there is, is God. Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant now if Jesus was a servant what make and he and he made no reputation for himself who are we to 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 run around seeking recognition who are we to run around to make trying to make our name great who who are we what is it that's going on that that we think that we have arrived at a place where we can have our name lifted up he says he says Jesus I don't know if y'all like this this morning Jesus Jesus said the Bible says that Jesus made no Jesus now casting out devil Jesus healing the sick Jesus y'all come a little closer raising the dead Jesus I'm not talking about passed out. I'm talking about four days dead. Raising the dead. I'm, talk, I'm talking about at the funeral procession. Raising the dead. I'm talking about Jesus. I ain't, I, I ain't talking about somebody that 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 that, that Holler loud and, and, and preach good. I'm talking about miracle working Jesus. I'm talking about open blind eyes Jesus. I'm not talking about just got something out of the eye. I'm talking about born blind. Miracle working Jesus made no reputation for himself what makes us think 
that if we heal, if we get somebody healed of a headache, we somehow great all of a sudden. Well, he, he made no reputation for himself. Everything, watch this, since we abide in him, we are his movement. We are his voice. Watch this now. Don't think it's you. Because he said in Psalms, blessed are the angels that excel in strength. That do his commandments. Whose commandments? Your commandments. Huh? His commandments. Act like you know who commandments it is. His commandments, watch this, who do his commandments hearkening to the voice of his word. You can speak it, but they hear him. You, we can say it, but it's him. Is his voice and his word and his commandment the devil is performing what has come from him it can come through you crucified come on now it, it comes through you who are crucified when you're crucified you ain't confused when you're crucified, you're not confused as to thinking that somehow it's you. But when we're crucified, we understand that from breath to breath is him. From one breath to the next is by his mercy. From one deed to the next is by his what? Grace. So the Bible says, the Bible says that he made no reputation for him, what? For himself. Now, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. You know why? Let me tell you what, let me read some more for you first. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now let me back up. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Say he say humility comes first. The struggle that people have with obedience to God is they haven't humbled themselves. A lack of humility will hinder your obedience every time. I'm going to say it again. A lack of humility will hinder your obedience to God every time. And so wherever there is a lack of humility, there is too much pride. There is no gray area. Y'all come in. Come on. Wherever there is a lack of humbleness, there is too much pride. Because wherever there is pride, there is not humility. There is just a form of humility. There is a display of, 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 of a person having gone to class and learning how to act humble. Don't you know if you do something long, if you work at something long enough, you'll learn how to do it? We can all do what? Act humble. We all know how to act humble. But that ain't the test which you can act like. Because God allows situations to arise in your life that'll cause what's in you to come up. Come up out of you. 
And so we've got to be careful and look in the mirror of the word and recognize what's in us and what we need to go to God with so he can take it out of us. Humble ourselves and say, Lord, help me because I need your help. Lord, I'm upset now and I'm at the borderline. I'm upset. You got to learn how to talk to God and be honest. Lord, help me because I'm upset and I'm at the borderline. You right now I'm still all right because you said be angry but seeing now I feel a pushing and I'm at the borderline. I need you to help me. You got to go to God and ask God for some help. Say God, listen here. I'm 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 I I want it. I want to. I I want to have it. I want to do it my way. I want to I want to get it together. I want to do it my way. I need you to help me right by now. You have got to allow God to help you because you know that if you don't ask God to help you, some of y'all going to fly so far off the handle, you going to think they don't sell round trip tickets. He says, he says, he was humble. He humbled himself and was obedient. The reason obedient, what makes obedience easy is humility. Now, now, what you got to realize is that when you humble yourself, it don't mean that it's going to, that's going to always be easy. It don't mean you're not going to shed some tears. It don't mean that you're not going to cry. Matter of fact, it don't mean that you're not going to want to open your mouth and say some things. Now, now come on now, just because you, just because you humble, just because you humble don't mean you're not going to feel like. Just because you humble don't mean that people, sometimes people gravy don't run all over your plate. Just because you humble. Now watch this, just because you humble don't mean that people not going to try to play your weak, play your humility for weakness. Take your kindness for weakness. That ain't what it mean now. Because they gonna, you're going to have folk try to play you. But the test comes is whether or not you acting humble or whether or not you are. Is, are you acting as though you're at a place in God that you're really not? Because the test will come that's going to reveal. The test going to come that's going to reveal where you really are. This is a key. If you ignore what the test reveals, you in trouble. Because if you ignore what God wants you to know, then he can't help you unless you allow it. But you won't allow it if you ignore the revelation that you need. Are y'all still with Pastor here? Look at your mind and tell them, tell them, don't deny God's help. Don't deny God's help. He says, he says, he was obedient unto death. In other words, now watch this. When he, when, when you're obedient to death, that means your humility allows that flesh to be crucified. In other words, you, you, when you humble yourself, you allow that process of your will to die and God's will to live. Your, your, what you want, the way you want it to die, to be crucified and allow the way Christ wanted, the cause of Christ, the life of Christ to be lived in you. And so it's why it says, old, the old man is crucified. It's a new man now. 
The old things are passed away. Behold, all things become what? Brand new. And so all things becomes brand new means all things in every area of your life, in every aspect of life, it becomes new. In other words, the way you see things now is different. The way you understand now is different. The way you speak now is different. Your, 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 your language is not what it used to be. Your deeds are not what they used to what? And so he says, let this mind, it begins with a, re, with a trans, being transformed by the renewing of the mind. Let the mind of Christ be in us. Are we still here today? Let, let's go a little further. Y'all, 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 y'all go with me. Y'all be with me now. Cause see, see, if, see when, I, when I look up. I'm looking out there and my glasses is out there, but, but I got to look down at through the bottom of my lens. Come on now. <laughs> I ain't lost my page, prophetess. I'm trying to adjust to my glass. See, sometimes I want to, I want to bend my head and look down. But that's not where the, that's not where the, where I got to look. I got to look. Y'all still with Pastor? All right. He said. All right. He says now, being found in the fashion of a as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So now when a person, um, when Jesus humbled himself, God gave him a name that is above what? Every name. So every, every name that there is, Jesus' name is above it. Let me read a little bit further here. His name is what? Above every name. That at the name of what? Of who? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. And let every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so the Bible says that after he humbled himself, God did what? God exalted him. The Bible says highly exalted him and gave him a name above every name. That means that God gave Jesus a name above cancer. He gave Jesus a name above thyroid. He gave Jesus a name above sickness and disease. He Jesus every name that is named in the earth. God has given Jesus a name above that. And saints, you have access. You you have power. You have life in and through the name of Jesus Christ. You abide in Jesus Christ. And because you abide in Jesus Christ, then now you live in the power and the deliverance that's found in him. And all you need is to do is call his name. All you need to do is call his name. When you call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says that he hears you. He answers you. There's deliverance in his name. There's peace in his name. His name. The Bible says that demons fear and tremble at the name of Jesus Christ. You can bind the devil in Jesus' name. You can rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. You can pray for healing in Jesus' name. You can pray for the breakthrough in Jesus' name. It's all in his name. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him it's in his name. It's all in his name. And listen, it says every, every, not only should every knee bow, that's things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. That's in hell. That's in hell. I just want to just, I want to just destroy some lie that's floating around uh, that there's no hell. There is a hell. You know how? I know because the Bible said so. The Bible says that God made hell. And so there is a hell. And so that means everything in hell need must bow to Jesus Christ. 
every every tongue that's in hell got to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He done already been down there already and made an open show of the devil when he was when he was crucified and taken off of the cross. He spent three days, the Bible says, in the grave. But during that time, he went down to paradise. And but while he was down in paradise, conducting a revival of all the saints that had died in God, the Bible says that he made an open show of the devil and that means so that whenever the devil gave any type of instructions at all to his imps all of them already know that Jesus is Lord ain't no confusion in hell about who's got the power give your neighbor a high five and tell him Jesus has the power Jesus has the power confusion in hell about who got the power. Jesus got the power. Jesus has the power. Now watch this. Jesus has the power. Jesus has the power. That means, watch this, you abide in him who has the power. I say you abide in him who has the power. So you being his movement, you move in his power. Because in him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being. So in him you are the display of his power. You don't believe it? Let me take you to the word. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be Look at your neighbor and give him a high five and tell him sound like he gave us power. 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 The power is in his name. The power is in his name. Healing is in his name. Breakthrough is in his name. The power is in his name. The power is in his name. To rebuke is in his name. To cast out is in his name. To deliver is in his name. It's all in his name. I say it's all in his. His name is great and greatly to be praised. It's all in his name. Wrap your hands and give God some praise. Because it's all in his name. It's all in his name. It's all in his name. Power is in his name. And because you abide in him, you abide in his power. You walk in his power. You preach in his power. You testify in his power. You're healed by his name. Nobody can undo what God has done. The power is given to you. Walk in it now. Walk in it now. Change your way of thinking now. Change your way of living now. Walk by faith and not by sight. Live by his power. The power of his word. The power of his name. Abide therein. Live therein. Walk it now. Talk it now. Nobody can do your life the Lord can. Jesus. Power in his name. There's power in his name. There's power in the name of the Lord. Shout glory in here. Shout hallelujah. There's power in here. So now the power he has, he's given it to you. The Bible says that he gave us all power. All. He gave us the power over all the power of the enemy. The power you walk in is his power. 
his proven power, his tested power, his unmatched power, the power in his name is already established above every name. So you don't have to question his power. You don't have to doubt his power. It's already proven power. It's already proven in every area because it's already been proven. It's already been tested. It's already been demonstrated. Now, the car got oil in it, got gas in it, got the license plate on it. That's updated. So that means the plates are up to date. The registration is up to date. So all you need is the keys to go get in. Watch this. All you need is the keys to go put in the ignition. But just because you have keys don't mean you legal on the streets. You got to be licensed. You got to have some license. Tell your neighbor, you got to be a licensed driver. <laughs> You don't want to, you can't be like the seven sons of Zebedee who tried to use the power illegally. But you who abide in him, because you abide in him, you become a licensed, authorized abider, speaker, user of the power in his name. Ask your neighbor, are you licensed? Ask your neighbor, are you a legal user of his name? You can't see in the, in the streets, in the world, you can ride dirty. But you can't ride dirty in the kingdom. In the kingdom, in the kingdom, you got to be a license. You got to be blood washed, sanctified, and holy. The Bible is speaker and user of the word. Hallelujah, Jesus. He says now, he says now, see, the, he says now, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. In other words, there's a, there's power, so much power in that God has put in his name because God has exalted his name above every name. And I don't, that, 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 now watch this. Every tongue has to confess. And every knee has got to demonstrate. Y'all don't, y'all missed it. There, he says, every knee should bow. In other words, the power of God that God has put in his name is so much power that it will cause a demonstration when you use it. It's so much power that it causes what's opposing you to bow to his name. 
to kneel to his name. So whatever's been coming against you, whatever has risen up against you, it has to take a knee. It has to take a knee because you fooled around and found out who you are and whose you are. You fooled around and found out that you are a licensed, authorized user. And you will not be debated, reasoned, analyzed, talked about, lied off of your position of holiness and power. Let me. Whew. Paul says to them, whereby, wherefore now, my beloved, you have always obeyed, not just in my presence, but you've been obedient in my absence. See, it's not just conducting yourself right when saints are looking at you. It's about being holy. It's about being obedient to the word of God when nobody, when the saints not around. Y'all still with pastor? I'm, I'm, clo I'm closing. I'm closing now. I'm closing. Now. I might need about two closes today, but I'm on my first one. He says. He says that. See, this this is important, saints, because uh, you can not only you can not only recognize in others how they act away from church or away from the sight of the pastor or away from the saints come on, come on. and what most people will do is they'll try and talk with you first to see where you are before they be themselves and if and if if you ain't if you ain't for all that they'll leave They'll go find somewhere else and someone else because they see already you ain't about that life. See, you ain't about that other life. You about the life of Christ. Let me and 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 and, and so he says. It says you're not only obedient in my presence, but you're obedient outside of my presence. That'll let you know where you are real good because it'll let you know that when you are not at church if you're still walking in obedience to God it'll let you know that you're actually more mature than you thought you was come on and that there is a spirit of obedience by obedience binding down in you for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure watch this it's God it's God that both, that works in us both to will and to do. Watch this. That means it's God that works in you to want to do his thing, to, to want to do his will. See, God is not just into you acting a certain way. He's into you becoming Christ becoming a certain way which is Christ and so God wants us to not just talk it or act it he wants us to become it see he wants us to become it now he says he says for God both work for God worketh in us both to will and to do so it's not enough just to do because if he don't work it in you to want to you'll do it once maybe twice Three times you did a favor. You did the church. You did you did the kingdom, the body of Christ. But it's in your longevity. And let me say something to you. Don't think the enemy is not going to pull at you. Because the enemy is going to certainly pull at you. He's going to try to hurt your feelings. He's going to try to discourage you. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? The enemy is going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to pull your attention. He's going to try to do whatever he can to trick you up. To get you out of the will of God. But he's opposing the work of God because God wants you to want to do it. 
not just do it. You see, you can't find fulfillment in doing something. Fulfillment is in you before you do it. And you do it because of the fulfillment of God that's down on the inside of you. What you do don't, don't help you overcome a deficit or a void. The void is filled by him and it's unto him that we do. You do all things unto Christ. That's right. So everything that we do, we do it as unto all right, that's now we 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 we're trying to wrap this up now. And then he says, now this is this is this is how you know you 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 growing now. He says, do all things without murmuring and complaining. Uh-huh. Say that again, without murmuring and disputing. That's right. He says, he's when you do it, do it without murmuring. Right. Watch this. Whenever, when, whenever you do something that you want to do, Amen. you don't murmur and complain about it. Amen. But when you do something you don't want to do, it's easy to complain, it's easy to murmur, it's easy to find fault. See, there's two things. Watch this. When you don't want to do something, you can find fault in anything having to do with it. And what that does, it feeds the reason or it feeds your what's in you that's trying to stop you from doing it. But when fulfillment is in you, then fault can come. But what happens is it comes to help you perfect it. Help you make it better. See, when, when, when you want to do the will of God, you try to perfect what you do. You try to perfect what you're doing and you have a positive impact on what it is that you're doing because you're doing it as unto y'all still with pastor alright now I think this is my last close right here he says so that you can be blameless and harmless the sons of God when you do this you are not blameless anymore you see murmuring and complaining gives give others a reason to find blame when you find blame with others, it causes blame to be found with you. So, play softly because it, it got tight right there. It got tight right there. Y'all, y'all come here now. Watch this. And, and I'm closing. Now, now, what happens is he says, without murmuring and complaining, you're blameless. So now, when you don't murmur and complain, not only are you not finding blame with others, blame is not being found in you. So that you can be blameless. Now watch this. The Bible says that the enemy goes before God all the time, accusing the brethren. He goes, he goes, and, he, and he's accusing the brethren. But God don't want you trying to stand up and argue the point. There's a process. God is the judge. Is he not? And I'm going to finish this while you're standing to your feet. God is the judge. And what happens is, when the enemy accuses the brethren, we got to recognize, saints, that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father who is the judge. 
And when blame is cast on you, Jesus is there. With the nail prints in his hand, the wound in his side, the spike prints in his feet. And what he does, because of his shed blood, when you repent, when I repent, when we repent, the enemy can be talking about something that you actually did, or we, any person in the body of Christ that we did. But what happens is, when you repent, or we repent, the body of Christ repents, Jesus shows the Father that he paid for the sin. He paid it in full. And what the enemy is trying to cast blame on you about, God says, not guilty. Because he's already been forgiven. She's already been forgiven. Now watch this. As this occurs, you can't, you can't appeal to the justice system on your behalf and stand up and be casting blame on somebody else at the same time. Are y'all still with Pastor? I missed y'all last week. I showed sure up, dude. I was happy to see family and to meet new family. But I missed y'all. Yeah, I missed y'all. You know, that was the first vacation I've been able to take with my family, with my children. Yeah. And when they were when they were small toddlers, I took them to Six Flags. But since they've been old enough to appreciate, well, ever since that time, I hadn't been able to go anywhere with the whole family. And so it was a blessing to get a chance to go and be with my family do something that we've not been able to do but in doing that and in all the enjoyment I had I still missed y'all yeah I still missed y'all believers you gotta let the mind of Christ be in you church is not something we come to once a week and then we just act try to act right that's not it this is life this is life join hands with your neighbor Paul at the end of verse 16 he said so that I have not run in vain he said, so my labor is not been in vain. You don't want your labor to be in vain. You want your labor. You're not, you're not running this race and going through all the things you going, you've gone through for nothing. No, it's not in vain the tears you shed. It hasn't been in vain. The difficulties you've made it through. It's not been in vain. I'm finna pray for you. But just remember the heartache that you've had. The hurt you've experienced. That God blessed you to make it through. It wasn't in vain. You made it through so you could help somebody else. You could have a testimony to encourage somebody else. So you could say, listen, baby, God did it for me. And I know he's going to do it for you. 
Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for your loving kindness and for your tender mercy. We give all glory and honor to you, God, for your word. We thank you now for speaking to our hearts and causing us to understand the will of God, the scriptures being alive unto us and now within us. Let thy word settle deeply in the soil of our hearts that it may be the light to our feet and the path that we are to take. Bless us now as we stand in your presence even the more. Touch the hearts and minds of these under the sound of my voice and those who are listening by way of streaming. Touch today. Move in this place and in their homes, in their cars, wherever they are. If it's at work, wherever they are, breathe a fresh upon each of them. Strengthen their heart now. Rebuke the devil from their mind. Father, we cast down every imagination and high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Now, Father, let the mind of Christ rest in the hearts of these, your people. In the name of Jesus, we know that that mind, Father, translated means heart. And so we thank you now for our hearts being changed by the word of your power. You declare to us all in your word that you would take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. Our hearts are in your hands and you turneth it whichever way you please. Help us now on this wise that we recognize the leading of thy spirit for the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. Rebuke the devil from the lives of these. Bind his work now that's been operating against their life. And Father, bring them into the wholeness of your pleasure, the will of God. And it is, O oh God, your will for these your people and all your people to prosper, be in health, even as our soul prosper. Help us on this wise that we rise to the level of obedience that pleases you having our ways please you oh God you make our enemies to be at peace with us in the name of Jesus it is our desire to follow to, to be holy and to follow peace with all men without which no man shall see God and we endeavor it is our heart's desire father when it's all said and done not only that we see you but that we hear you say well done my good and faithful servant Everything that threatens the faithfulness of your people, rebuke it, God, and move it from the lives of your people. Let nothing hinder us in the way of your will. Bless us to please you at all times. And we thank you now for causing us to receive the truth that helps us abide therein, walk therein. For you declare to us the truth that we know makes us free. And God, we thank you because who the Son set free is free indeed. We abide therein and in the name of Jesus, I speak healing in the life of these, healing in the life of those that are listening. We speak healing, O oh God, for Jesus was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed and we are healed today. Healed in the body, healed in the mind, healed in the soul, healed in our homes, relationships healed in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, open doors and make ways for you are our miracle worker. You are our way maker. We thank you now, God, for opening doors that no man can close. And we praise you for it now. Order our steps in your word that we may abide therein and enter therein the doors that you open unto 
us all. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and give you praise now. In Jesus' name. If there is anyone in this place today who does not know God in the pardon of your sins, does not know Jesus Christ, you say today, I've never been saved, but I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want you to just step out into the aisle and come and meet me here. The Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here today and you say, I gave my life to Christ. I've been saved before, but I lost my way. Became distracted with the cares of life. There's been hurts and different things that have occurred in my life. And I just haven't been as faithful as I should be to God. I want you to come now. If it is so your desire to come, rededicate your life to God. Just step out into the aisle and come from where you are. Thank you, Jesus.